friction. I really like this uh, this picture here with the terminal velocity. So it's terminal velocity raptor, a question of your gravity and your air, right? It talks about, uh, it's related to friction, at least. And I like this one right here, which is an old trope from, uh, do you remember this show? Whose line is it anyway? It used to be with a British host and they had it with uh, Drew Carey uh, later. I uh, like this welcome to physics where the situations are made up and friction doesn't matter. Uh, in this case, friction will matter. Uh, so friction is a force that opposes the motion. It opposes the motion usually with um, a loss of energy in the term of heat. You can actually feel that, you know, this sort of dumb example, but it really works, right? You just rub your hands really a lot. You notice they actually get really hot. So, I mean, that is, that is friction. So let's just say I have this example here where some sort of, uh, you know, dinosaur here or something is uh, pulling on me. Um, if this is the case, if I want to draw the different forces acting on me, I would have my force you know, due to my weight, um, an upwards force, I'd have a reaction force. We can call it R if you want for reaction force. Some people call that the normal force, fine, same, same. So the reaction force and the weight. But I would also be feeling some sort of force applied here by this dinosaur. And I would also have some sort of force of friction. And if these two forces, the force applied and the friction force are not equal, then I'm gonna accelerate. So then I'll start moving. So there's this whole idea about this friction force and what actually happens with it. So this R is the reaction force. It's measured in Newtons. It's also called the normal force. We have W is the weight. Right? That's also in Newtons. We have the friction force, which is in Newtons. Uh, and this is the key thing is that F, the friction force, and the reaction force, so the normal force, they're proportional. What that means is you have a bigger force of friction when you have a bigger reaction force. And it turns out they're related to each other uh, by this uh, relation here, that the slope of this or the gradient of this will be mu. Mu is a symbol we use for the coefficient of friction. Now we have a general equation then, if you look at this, this is linearized, which means we can say F of friction is it gonna equal to some constant mu times Fn. If you look, see this is the y, this is the x, and that means this right here is the slope or the gradient. So it's gonna look something like this, okay? But we can get a little bit more specific because it depends on if you're moving or if you're not moving. So that's the next little page here. So if you're not moving, we call it static friction. So there we say that your force of friction, remember I said everywhere else that force of friction is equal to mu r, right? And it just it depends on what kind of mu we have, what kind of friction we're looking at. So the little subscript s means static, means not moving. So what it tells you is your, your, so, um, your force of friction is less than this. That means that this thing isn't moving. So like if I, you know, you're trying to drag on the ground and I was just trying to pull a little bit, if I'm not pulling enough, it's not gonna move. That's at that moment, I've got that force of friction is less than this value. However, if I can pull enough, then all of a sudden my force of friction, you know, becomes, you know, such that these two are here are equal to each other. When they're exactly equal, then it can just start moving. Uh, so that's that static friction coefficient. And once you are moving, then we can talk about dynamic friction coefficient. And that's why we use this mu d for dynamic. Okay, so that's the key thing is uh, still thing is that's static coefficient of friction. This right here is moving, so it's dynamic. So that's why we put the subscript uh, s and d. So let's take a look then if we can do a real example. And all of a sudden it starts off kind of okay looking and then I've got an example that looks really horrible. So we'll deal with it. So you have an object, it's originally sitting on a horizontal board. So maybe I'll try to draw that. Uh, but then that board is raised up slowly, slowly so that it makes an angle uh, with the horizontal. So let's just say I draw that. So I could draw some sort of random board like this. Oh, that was a good straight line. There we go, that's theta. And this is my object, doesn't matter what. The world's most boring example, because it's an object here, right? So I keep raising it until the, um, this object starts to slide. So this could be like me just sitting there and all of a sudden you just raise it, do, oh, I fall down. You ever seen the old movie Titanic, for example, that happened to the people on it, sadly. Um, but I mean, this, you know, this happens with anything. It raises up, but eventually it's gonna start sliding. Same thing with uh, snow and avalanches, actually. So I mean, a lot of things relate exactly to this. So if we were to look at this, we need to know the normal reaction force, N. And that's the problem with the IV. They use a lot of different notations sometimes. So I've got a, this is one of these questions. I really want to show you this because it's really important to be able to break all this up into components here.
So let's just say we look at this one. I'm going to take this and right from this one, I have a downwards force. Huh? And this downwards force, um, I should call it maybe the weight. So I'll call it the weight maybe. But we know how that one's going to be related in a second here. We'll see. Um, now I've got this force right here. And that is actually this normal force here. That's this normal force. Or you can say the reaction force. I can call it N or I can call it R. That is always uh, perpendicular to the surface. So in this case, this surface is up at a weird angle. There it is. This is one of those you might be cringing. Oh God, what do I do? Oh yeah, we're going to have to break it up into components. So what I'm going to do is say this. I mean, this thing isn't flying upwards or downwards. Uh, I mean, it's not flying off the surface. It's sliding, but it's certainly not flying off the surface. So that means I know that I can make a vector that goes sort of down. Um, and I can also make a vector that goes across. I'm going to break it up. And it, did you know, if you're really careful through geometry, this is also that same angle theta. Did you know that? that this angle that you lifted up is the same as that angle that goes like that. This is one of these typical questions that a lot of people really struggle with. That's why I want to show you how to deal with it. So I've redrawn it like this now. We can also figure out a little step from what the, each of these things is. Um, because we do know something about this. We know that the weight is going to be equal to something to do with uh, theta, isn't it? I mean, we know it's the mass times gravity, but the problem is we don't know exactly what to do with it, right? So here's the thing. This thing right here is going to be related to the angle. In this case right here, it's going to be, uh, and we have the mass times the force of gravity. So this is how it's going to work. The weight is always uh, mass times force of gravity. So in this case here, it's going to be mg. Uh, that'll be this piece down here, that straight down piece. That's mg right here. That's this force here. That's this uh, weight. So weight is mg. Okay, so that's this one right here. However, how do I figure out the rest of these ones? Like what's this piece and what's this piece? I need to figure those out. So I'm going to do this maybe in a different color. They look a little bit weird, but we can do this. So if this is mg, then uh, this one right here, if you use your right angle triangle, Soka Toa, you'll see that this one right here is the sine because this one here is opposite to it like this. So I always remember that. So this tells me it's a sine. This one then will be mg sine theta. This one over here then will be mg cos theta. You can take your time and try to figure it out. If you soak a toe, you'll get that. So now here's the issue then going on. What, what, what am I looking for? In this case right here, I have, first of all, I want the normal reaction force. Do you notice, by the way, that this one that's going up, this normal force going sort of up and left, it's exactly counteracted by this mg cos theta here. So actually, this is really easy. My normal force is just equal to this mg cos theta, this one going down that way. It's exactly on that same plane. So I can just say it's mg cos theta. Nice, that was actually not so bad. I mean, it's drawing this is the hard part. Once you get used to these drawings, you'll see you can solve these. Find the coefficient of static friction. How do I do that? Well, I know that when I when I just just have it start to slide, then I know that my static friction force, you could say, um, is how should I say? It? Yeah, I can say my force of static friction. I can call it FS, S for static. I can say that just when it starts to move, that static friction force is going to be just counteracting. Um, remember, friction is always acting opposite to the motion. So if this thing right here is sliding down that way, the friction force is going to act that way. The static friction force is going to be that way. And this force right here, do you see which force that is going down that way? Do you see it's this arrow right here? It's this mg sine theta. That's the one that's going down that hill. So this is the mg sine theta. And this is this fs, this static friction force. And just when it's about to start sliding, those two forces are equal. So just at that moment, then I know that that FS, that static friction force, is going to be exactly equal to that mg sine theta going down the hill. Right? But do you remember the equation for static friction? Static friction says that, uh, let's see, the FS in this case would be mu s times the reaction force. So I know, so I'll say but, I know my static friction force is equal to the static coefficient of friction here times the normal force, which in this case they called it N. Fine, we'll call it N then. Uh, so good news. Do we know what N is? We sure do. Do you see this? This is actually really awesome. We actually know what N is. N is this. So we shove it into here. So that means then that we can say that. Mm, maybe I'll do it in a different color now. 
That means I can say that fs equals mu s times n, which is m g uh, cos theta. Right, that's from this piece. But we said it also equals mg sine theta. So now I have mg cos theta times mg sine theta. What do I do there? Do you notice the mg's can cancel out? So now I have mu s equals, uh, let's see, I can do sine theta. And do you know I can divide by cosine? Because I have sine and I have cosine over here multiplied by the mu. So because of that I can divide by cos. And do you remember what sine over cos is? It's tangent. So phew, we actually figured it out. So this question is not very easy at all. And yet, uh, once you get used to solving these kinds of questions, especially breaking it up in these component pieces, being really good at finding that mg cos theta, that mg sine theta, that is so important. So I would really recommend you learn how to do that.